What's going on people, I'm Mansour Bello and today Afrobeats360 have given me another treat. I'm going on a date with the lovely Shay Shay. So let's check it out and see what happens. But before that, I'm pretty sure I know how that date is going to go. Just me and you, just me and you. Just the two of us. <laughs> Anyway, let's get to the interview. So ladies and gentlemen, the anticipation's over. I'm here with my beautiful date, Shay Shay. <laughs> and the snooker, but look at the way she can turn up. I must say, glam luck, swagger on 10, and kid bots. So if ever you need any help holding the stick or you know, you know, looking at what ball you want to get, then you know I'm gonna be there just to okay. Fantastic. Okay, so let's start. Let's do this. Cool. So how long have you been in London? I've been in London for four or five days now. Yeah? Yes. How are you finding it so far? Well, it's been busy because um, I've been doing a lot of TV, a lot of radio. Mm -hmm. Can I still aim for the red? You can still aim for the red because okay. no one's putting in a ball yet. Right. Oh god, that was stupid though. That was really, that was just, one that was silly. One more. So you know, the, so my real name is actually Shay. Yeah. Uh, it's like an abbreviation of a longer name, which is Oluwa Shay, which means God made this. But I decided to uh, keep the Shay, obviously. Yes. You used to live in London, what part of London? I, I was born and raised in North London, actually. I was born in North Middlesex Hospital. I went to school in Hornsey. Mm, and then I later on moved to Essex, mm -hmm. and that's where I mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. I'm a North Londoner, yes. Okay, so that shows a bit of the fiery. Yes. That's where you get it. From. That's where I get it. From. No riots here, please, yeah. Okay. No riots. <laughs> no worries. Ooh. Almost, you know. You tried. I was in London, but before I made the transition to Nigeria, I was living in Houston, Texas, at the house of Darion with the girl band and Matthew, and we were just doing. It was like a three years of boot camp, man. Seriously. Teaching us how to give interviews, how to dance, how to sing, how to record, mm. shooting a reality show, going on tour with Beyonce. It was a fun field three or four years. So, so I'd really like to see an Afro artist reach out to someone. Like that. But it's happened though, you know, like P Square did a song with Rick Ross, and this kid has done something with Wale now. But it's all the boys female, doing it on the on female, female part, tip. Man. Yeah, on the female tip. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna happen. Definitely gonna happen. I can't really reveal too much, but we're already working on international collabs. The album is gonna drop this year, so there'll be some Nigerian and international features by God's grace if everything goes through. Next five. I'm actually trying to help. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yes, and just arch your back a little bit more. Yes, that's much better. And the one, two, three. We haven't even been in Nigeria for that long. No. And you've already started, you know, oh. causing a big wave, a big stir. And yes. It's never been a year. Yeah. I also know that you also, you know, sang bad with Wale. You're only the third person yes. to do that as well, yes. apart from the original Rihanna. That's true. Singing bad with Wale on stage in December was like a dream come true because that whole year it was my favorite song. I never yeah. thought I'd ever get to meet him. And then he came to Nigeria and some people told him, oh, this girl, she's new, she's hot, she's blah, blah. And uh, he just said, make sure you don't F it up. That's yeah. what he said, you yeah. know. And I was like, no, of course I won't. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. And then I got on stage and I sang and that was it. Just, just more. Thank you. It was, just, it was fantastic. But we were um, being trained by choreographers like Frank Gatson and Danielle Polanco, who all 
uh, work with Beyonce and so I was actually the weakest dancer in the group. Wow. The other girls were trained ballerinas and you know contemporary dancers and I had no training whatsoever. If you watch the reality show on MTV you will see that I always got slated for my lack of choreography and stuff so it was very hard for me. So when I moved to Nigeria I decided to make a performance and dancing something that I had to do because I knew that it made a difference. Yeah, when I got to Nigeria and I watched shows, I watched a lot of artists that were just singing to the backing track, miming and stuff. And if Matthew Knowles had ever seen that, he would be sick. Because he, he used to say, how do you how do you expect people to want to come back and pay money to watch you if you're not going to entertain them? And so I think part of entertaining is literally putting on a song and a dance and looking good and sounding great. And I've been trained to do that now, so that's always going to happen. What can we get from the album? Well, Raga Raga is the beginning of my new era, like my new image, my new branding. And so definitely more edgy, more bold sounds. And I'm definitely drawn to that urban sound. And because I'm an Afro pop artist, you're going to definitely hear the Afro beat. The word raga is actually in my in my mind mm. actually is just a word that expresses something that has no word to express it. So I, I could say, dude, your hat is raga, and mm. it could be like it's dope, or you know, or someone could just walk in looking all funky and be like, mm. bro, that 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 that's a bit raga, that's a bit raga, raga. He just cheated. He just walked by and did he did this. This is what he did. That's what he did. Did you see that? Okay. I got two, one in. I got one in, guys. No, you didn't. Come here, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh God, Afrobeats360, you guys are huge and I'm so happy to be here. Mm -hmm. It's really 